Hey, Fozzie here. Um, hello to everyone. Uh, first of all, a big congratulations to the football ferns on and for you New know, Zealand Australia winning that that two what is it twenty twenty three. So that's fantastic for for football in this country. Well done. Yeah, it's an idea or I guess a proposal that's been put to us. And, and in this year of of so much disruption and changes, you know, we're not dismissing anything. Um, our first priority is clearly to to play all black tests and so we're hanging out to see what we can do with Australia and South Africa and Argentina particularly but you know we're not going to say no to anything right now. I've had a couple of talks to to Mel Meninga, it was great talking to him, um, top bloke, uh, about kind of what the game would look like if, if it did happen so there's a lot of work to be done in that space and like I said it's a it's a proposal on the table at the moment. Oh, look, I think there's always a, a concept of how you can pitch two great teams against each other and and to try and see who's the greatest, you know, and it's um and it's one of those debates that'll go on in, in, in New Zealand and Aussie pubs for a long time. And reality is even if we played each other, we'd probably never know. But it's um because, you know, there'll, there'll be a debate about the rules and, and who it favoured. So look at like I said, it's an idea, it's a it's an it's a it's a tough year, you know. We're trying to gen generate as much money as we can to save the game in this country, and and if we can't get the number of test matches we want, then then maybe it is an option. Yeah, we are, you know, talking to the selectors with Foxy and Plum and, and the other coaches. Um, we're, we're seeing plenty of attitude. We're seeing we're seeing a sort of a renewed enthusiasm from our players. So obviously the. You can see how much the game means for them, and that means a lot to us because you know who you play for and what you're playing, the cause behind you playing is is, is a big part of players getting better and better. And so, you know, overall, pretty excited. This means some close, tight games. The fast and and the and the, and the new interpretations are forcing players to think. So um, that's great for us. The breakdown up until last year has started to become the wild west and there were actions involved there were people diving down we were getting injuries where people were coming way past the gate and cleaning on the other side of rucks we were getting a lot of people who were just going and diving down on players for just for the sake of it and we were having jacklers off their feet and and forcing them to be cleaned hard by people on their backs and stuff so we had to do something and so rather than reinvent new rules, we've actually redefined what the old rules were. So, you know, whether people accept that or not, that's exactly what's happened. So it's just it's just getting the refs to actually ref a little bit more technically and be a lot more demanding on technique. And like always, when you change and you're demanding on technique and you're trying to change habit, it takes a little while. So um, the players are slowly adapting. And I think we've seen that. The refs are in a really tough position because there's only two games a week. You know, we've got five five top New Zealand refs who are ref in Super Rugby, but there's only two games a week. So they haven't got a they haven't got a lot of learning cycles. You know, they've got a you know, their first time out there, they've got to try and get it right. And so we're working hard with them, viewing clips, having good conversations. And I know the super rugby coaches are doing the same. So it's just it feels like everyone's pulling in the same direction. And you know, we haven't got it right yet. But um, it's it's getting there. We're pretty excited, and we're obviously firm enough to date. You know, we've just got to sort the ground out, and we've got to find some hotels that aren't being used for quarantining, and that's not easy. And and then we've got to, um, I guess, after Super Rugby, pick a couple of teams, and uh, you know, we're kind of looking at a. Um, We've looked at it and we think the best legacy thing for us to do is to pick players probably on the first province that they played for because, of, you know, the, the choice they made when they pl played sort of first-class rugby for that province was probably the start of their move into the professional game. So we think that's the, the best criteria. Uh, not yet, um, but needless to say... Um, you know, I guess from a from an all black coaching group, we've got a bunch of new coaches that are um, that have been working hard and and they need to coach, and so we'll find some combination there. 
No, we won't. We won't pick it before that game. At this stage, um, and again, all plans are pretty fluid. But we, we felt that let Super Rugby play out and let's just enjoy that. Then we'll get into a North South game, and and probably might it might even be a little bit old school that it's the day after the North South game that we uh, have the old Sunday morning media conference and announce the team. So um, we have to do things a little bit differently than we normally do. You know, it'll. Won't be that easy for players in the north south if they if they're not selected. I guess they're going to have to pack up and leave. But um, it's a little bit about the way it was done in the past, and I, and I think at the moment it's it's probably the best solution for us. Oh, I, if you mean political, is it above the pay scale of an All Black coach? The answer is probably yes. I mean. To be fair, if you're going to play four games, I've, I've got a cunning idea as why don't we play two here and two there. That sounds reasonably fair to me. Um, so I think that would be the ideal. And and whether it's a, a balance away from a 2-2 split will depend purely on not rugby politics, but on, on health politics really about whether we can. I'm doing a lot of planning, but... I don't know what's going to happen. I do know what will happen will be quite special. We could end up with a bucket load of test matches in a, in a hurry, and that's going to be another challenge for us. Um, so I'm loving watching what I'm watching. I'm, I, there's part of me as an all-black coach, a bit frustrated because I want to have a plan and I want to go and get stuck into it, but I can't. But in the meantime, we've got to get ready for whatever things get chucked at us. Yeah, well, I went on my first plane trip last week. Went down to Wellington, and um, and like I said, it's been a it's actually been a privilege to be part of the big crowds, you know. And I've I've been to the game in Hamilton and a game in Auckland last week, and a game in Wellington, and um, again looking forward, I guess, to Eden Park on Saturday night. But I think Christchurch, hopefully, that'll be pretty special from the first home game for the Crusaders, and hopefully that community. Um, I guess gets them behind the rugby, but also gets gets them behind just meeting together in a big place um, like the other ones have.